was going to be joined in a special moment by Jody and the Zeno. Page 120, and if you have one of the thinner Shabbat only prayer books, look to the bracketed page numbers. Bracketed page numbers. And, and before we start, actually, I just want to say that, that Jody and Leslie um, have just made this move so easy and have been wonderful. And the transition team and the, the search team and, and, you know, the day that I spent here before just made it very clear to me that this was a warm and loving and, and open community that I really, really wanted to be a part of. And I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful opportunity to find somebody sitting near you who you haven't yet said Shabbat Shalom to and just say a quick Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. If you could just ask if anybody needs a prayer book. Yes. We're short a few. If you think in, tell them to raise their hands. I'll come around with some more. Oh, you, you, but we have more. <laughs> but we have more back there? Let me just check. I don't want to offer yes, it until I know. Okay. <sighs> I'm about to. Oh. So on page 128, you will find an absolutely beautiful poem um, at the bottom. So Shabbat HaMalka, and it's about Shabbat the Bride. And uh, so I want to just teach you a little tune. And that's the only thing I'm going to teach you tonight, I promise. <laughs> um, but Hands up for prayer books, by the way. Sorry for the interruption. Ah, yes. If prayer you need books, a prayer book. If you need one. Thank you, Stu. Thank you, Jody. So uh, I'm going to teach you your part and Rabbi is going to keep going with your part. So you have someone to follow and then we're just going to do a little canticle over it. Okay. So your part is really easy. That's it. Okay. So join me, please. You guys are great at this. So everybody here is now signed up for the choir for High Holy Days. <laughs> um, Walter will get the rehearsal dates to you immediately. <laughs> so the, the point of the prayer is that as we watch the sun fall behind the trees in a few hours, because it's summer, <laughs> we can feel that sense, that the loaming of a Friday night morning in school. And so I'm just going to sing, as you guys sing, Boi Kala, Welcome Bride. I'm just going to sing a little bit about the sun coming down over the trees. So let's start again. Boi kala, 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 Amen. 
thank you so much for teaching us something new and something beautiful. I know that we're in for a lot more of that. I'm very excited. As we welcome Shabbat with Kabbalat Shabbat, we turn to page 131 for Shiru Lagonai, Sing to God a New Song, to which the medieval commentator David Kimke says, you should make your song new every time you sing it, even if it is not a new song. Make it new. Shiru Lagonai. Shiru Shiru Ladonai, 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 Come, friends, friends, let us find one another, go out into this beautiful evening, and together find Shabbat. Page 138. Turn to string verses 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9. There will be many harmony opportunities. Please listen carefully. Can you calm down? Please. <laughs> Ya la 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 Shabbat 
the righteous bloom like a date palm. They thrive like cedars planted in Lebanon, planted in the house of Adonai. They flourish in the courts of God. finished, have a lot Shabbat, we can say officially Shabbat Shalom, including to our friends who have come in and to uh, all of our friends on Zoom. And uh, thank you so much uh, to Susie for making the Zoom happen tonight. And I can't see who's on there, but Haida, if you're on there, or anybody else from the other end who's helping make it work. Was Haida actually back in back there? <laughs> well, just because she's here doesn't mean she's also not helping make it work. Such it's is the magic. Such is the... Um, <laughs> the polyvocal nature of responsibilities these days. But, uh, <laughs> but actually, I'm very glad that Haida has a little break from that. Um, because truly, we are one community, whether we're here or whether we are accessing and praying together, our prayers combine across the distance. Our service continues now with Ma'ariv. Page 146 is Baruch Hu. I invite you to please rise if it is comfortable to do so. Yeah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler, ruler of, of the universe, universe who speaks the evening into being, being skillfully opens the gates, gates thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light, transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tzavot is your name. Ever living, Ever living God, God, may you reign continually over us into, into eternity. eternity. Blessed, Blessed are you, Adonai, Adonai who brings on evil. evening. Together, Baruch Ata Adonai, Amar Aviv, Aravim, on page 150, Avat Olam, 
בית ישראל, עמך אהבת תורה ומצוות, חוקים ומשפטים, אותנו לימדת. על כן אדוני אלוהינו, בשוכבנו ובקומנו נשיח בחוקיך, ונשמח בדברי תורתך ובמצוותיך לעולם ועד. כי הם חיינו ואורך ימינו, ובהם נהגה יומם ולילה. ואהבתך אל תסיר ממנו לעולמים, ברוך אתה אדוני, אוהב עמו ישראל. We can have a seat. Turn to page 154. ואהבתה <laughs> 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 ודיברת בם, בשבטך בביתך, ובלכתך בדרך, ובשוכבך ובקומך, וקשרתם לאות על ידך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך, למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל The theme of justice and freedom run through our service and our tradition with great strength, which is perhaps one reason why the first Jewish immigrants to this country found so many strong ties between the words of the Hebrew prophets, the sound of the Liberty Bell. Perfect timing. Well done. I could not have planned that any better. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the freedom and liberty that courses so strongly throughout the American legend and throughout our sacred founding texts as Americans. And the, the story of freedom in the Torah, though, is more complex than just the singing on the shores of the sea. It's the singing on the shores of the sea and then going to get Torah. In other words, the experience of freedom from bondage and then the constraints or the acceptance of guidelines of how to manage that freedom because without that society could not exist and justice would not prevail. In a week like this, which is full of both so many beautiful sights, sounds, feelings, having celebrated uh, the 4th of July, but also seen the tragedy that happened on the 4th of July and that continues to befall our country. We remember every day as we contemplate our freedoms, that freedom must always be tempered by a, a social agreement, by rules that we all will follow to keep each other safe and to protect our country. And I hope as we sing these words, we'll evaluate and think to ourselves what that can look like in this country, because it's time for some changes. Micha Mocha is on page 158. No, I 
Sound of freedom. Here we go. Continue on page 160. We'll read together. Grant, O God, that we lie down in peace and raise us up, our guardian, to life renewed. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Guide us with your good counsel. For your name's sake, be our help. Shield and shelter us beneath the shadow of your wings. Defend us against enemies, illness, war, famine, and sorrow. Distance us from wrongdoing. For you, God, watch over us and deliver us. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. Guard our going and coming to life and to peace evermore. In Hebrew, Baruch Atah Adonai, Apores Sukkat Shalom, Aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael ve'al Yerushalayim. Spread over your Sukkat Shalom, God, your canopy of peace for us, for Israel, for all the people of the world. Amen. Page 162. Did you want to share your special dance moves in this one, or we're not ready for that one yet? I don't think so. Okay, maybe next week. I'll tell you things. <laughs> say it's been really lovely to lead the service with um, my new partner Dr. Casola so far you're going to see her a lot this summer I hope and you'll uh, learn a lot about her um, not least of which is that she comes to us with the credentials 
of a professor of rhetoric. <laughs> so I always have to read my emails twice now just to make sure I didn't make a grammatical or spelling mistake that Dr. Virginia had. Yeah, well, here's the thing I tell people. I only grade for codes. <laughs> I'll have to remember that one. <laughs> well, Dr. Casorla, um, in addition to um, her academic background, is a student at the um, Academy of Jewish Religion. Did I get that right? Oh, AJR? Yeah, Academy for Jewish Academy Religion. Academy for, excuse me, yes. those pesky prepositions. They are, they are. Uh, <laughs> where, which is a non-denominational, um, or do you prefer pluralistic? Pluralistic, pluralistic is what we go with. Yeah. Pluralistic seminary. Uh, and she's uh, training to be both a rabbi and a cantor part-time, which means that in 40 to 60 years, something like that, yeah, you can call her rabbi, doctor, cantor, <laughs> cantor. MFA, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and hey, you works really well. And I think, I mean, I needn't belabor the point, but to say that we have a tremendously talented person here who's going to be a terrific uh, asset for our religious school and our families and a teacher for all of us in so many different ways, somebody passionate about learning and intergenerational Jewish learning and, and, and Jewish commitment. So I feel very privileged to get to work with you. Thank you. Likewise. And, and I have to say that, that as, as Rabbi points out, like lifelong learning is really my passion. I, I, I suppose that after you have a PhD, if you decide to go back to school, lifelong learning must be your passion. <laughs> but what I really want uh, as I meet all of you over the course of the summer, which I'm, I'm really looking forward to meeting each of you, you know, one-on-one -on -one and, and really getting to spend some time getting to know you. What I'd really love to know is what you want to know. What part of Judaism, what part of, of Jewish music and liturgy and, and all of all of the stuff that we do together as a community, do you want to dig further into? Because what I'm hoping is that if I know what you want to do more of, we can do more of it and have lots of fun together. Well, I think we have a lot to chew on and think about as we join together in the Amidah, which is on page 164. If it's comfortable for you to do so, please rise and join us. Adonai sefatai tiftachu fi agitei latecha. Adonai open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Eloheinu v'imoteinu.
continue now with a moment of silent prayer through page 180. Please feel free to take the time you need, and whenever you are ready, you may have a seat.
acceptable to you. Adonai, my love and my redeemer. You are the one We pause for a moment to think of all of those who are in need of healing on this day. Perhaps somebody from your life is in need of some extra prayers. There's a lovely community around you who can help make that happen because it actually does make a difference to know that people are caring and praying for you. Absolutely. We think of our temple members, Amy Agronoff, April Diamato, Norma Diamond, Ken Gammerman, Henry Gettenberg, Marjorie Hart Glossband, Josh Lipschitz, Sabrina Maurer, Paula Retsky, and Ellen Warner. And our loved ones, Marie San Martino, Connie Ambrosino, Rochelle Downheimer, Jay Fliss, Mickey Bart, Sue Yaris, Joanne Crisulo, Matthew Pincus, Mark Ostriker, Bart Young, Connie Talata, Marvin Goldberg, Paul Frisman, Jordan Lustig, Gloria Newell, Carol Bartlett, Sabin Meyer, Sherry Cohen, Joan Sidney, Michael Stafford, Ira Weiss, Harold Solomon, Drew Garabo, and Peg Pig. If there are others that you'd like to add, feel free to do so here in person or on Zoom. You can use the chat function to share the name of your loved one if you wish. We also include John Marver. As we turn to page 371 for Misha Berach prayers, we ask God's blessing that in the merit of our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob, Rachel and Leah, that they find healing, or if they cannot find healing, that they find fortitude, strength and care. Page 371. Before us, help us find the 
courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say My 10-year goal is to be living in a carbon-neutral house. This is only achievable if we make some big changes. To start this year, Susan and I installed solar panels, and most of her driving is on solar power. But we still have propane heat. My car still burns good old-fashioned gasoline. I believe what scientists tell us that climate change stands to devastate our world and sink us as a species unless we play a role to the contrary. But I'm not perfect. I burn propane. I burn wood. I drive a gasoline car. I fly in airplanes. How will future generations judge me? Will I be part of change? Or will they see me as a spineless incrementalist, too meek, too slow to change? I see Ron Capozzi out there. I'm going to have to get his thoughts after this. As a rabbi, the question of how my decisions might impact following generations is always on my mind. But it's also one that I've been thinking about quite a lot lately, as our country seems to have taken a very sharp turn, a turn in reversing progress in human rights. As we all know, a woman's right to choose is no longer guaranteed, and in fact, in many states, it is already illegal. There is now talk about reconsidering rights to contraception, marriage equality, and gender, and race, maybe up for consideration in the Supreme Court too, I do not know. I think a lot of us are very concerned. And when I think about the founding principles of our country, and the changing mores of our society, I can't help but go back to the beginning, or if not the very beginning, then at least the founding generation that we learn about, teach about, and uphold, to Thomas Jefferson, who was, of course, most famous and notable as one of the Declaration of Independence's authors. His memorial, by the way, is also my favorite on the National Mall in Washington, DC. Have you been there? It's often overlooked and underappreciated because you have to take a little walk from the big museums around the tidal basin in order to get there. But it's so worthwhile, especially at night. In fact, the Religious Action Center, which is the reform movement's um, political action group in Washington, DC, brings all of the teens who come to its conferences there for Havdalah on the steps of the Jefferson Memorial right at the basin. And it is just a beautiful ritual. It is a stately and awe-inspiring place. And here's one of the things that he wrote that's written on the wall there. He said, I am not an advocate for frequent changes in laws and constitutions, but laws and institutions must go hand in hand with the progress of the human mind. As that becomes more developed, more enlightened, as new discoveries are made, new truths discovered, and manners and opinions change. With the change of circumstances, institutions must, must advance also to keep pace with the times. 
we might as well require a man to wear still the coat which fitted him when a boy as a civilized society to remain ever under the regimen of their barbarous ancestors. How's that for some rhetoric? Woo! Times change, friends. I don't have to tell you this. Values shift. Human understanding advances. Society advances with it, or at least we hope it will, right? I believe what Thomas Jefferson is saying here is that our founding documents are living documents. To read the Constitution in its narrowest historical sense is not only anachronistic and somewhat illogical in many cases, in my opinion, but it's also, I think, an injustice to the aspirational ideals that it represents, that the Declaration of Independence represents. And I say this not as a political idea, but actually as a religious idea. Why? Because it's why I'm a reformed Jew. I recognize the historical dimension to our story, but I do not feel that it needs to weigh me down and sink me. I believe that's what the great Rabbi Mordechai Kaplan intended when he said that halakha, which is Jewish law, always gets a vote, but never gets a veto. Our founders recognized the pivotal role that they played in history, but they also recognized that their ideas and values would not be the last word in America if America were to survive and thrive as it has. So Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson, of course, was a complex man. We think of him most immediately for that famous statement about our natural rights, influenced as it was by the Enlightenment, by those great philosophers of America's founding, the pursuit of happiness, right? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yet the most compelling evidence of his feelings concerning equality comes not from the Declaration itself, but from one of its draft sections that was later omitted. In an essay by Stanford University Emeritus Professor of History, Jack Raycove, I learned that originally the last of the 17, 17 quote, repeated injuries and usurpations of King George III was the slave trade. Jefferson opens that jettisoned passage by asserting that the king, quote, has waged war against human nature itself, violating its most sacred rights of life and liberty by, quote, captivating and carrying Africans into slavery in another hemisphere, or else, quote, exposing them to miserable death in the horrific voyages we now call the Middle Passage. Clearly, Jefferson had some very fierce words for the institution of slavery here employed in a very polemical way. And he expressed these feelings elsewhere too. Yet, of course, the yet, he was also a slaveholder himself. Jefferson knew that the Declaration of Independence for all its beauty, for its progressive vision, was also deeply hypocritical. It affirmed human rights while preserving the status quo of slavery. For all his enlightened and egalitarian sensibilities, he knew that he too was a hypocrite. Reflecting on this cognitive dissonance, he himself wrote, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just, that his justice cannot sleep forever. Was Jefferson a hero, a villain? Should he be canceled, his statues taken down? In Torah study last week, we were considering the rebellious demands of Korach, who brings a serious threat to the leadership of Moses and Aaron. He is often painted as a villain in rabbinic literature, and truly, he voices his objections to the way that society is organized in so aggressive and ungenerous a way that reasonable people might have a hard time understanding and appreciating the substance of what he says. But is he a total villain? Well, he raises some very good points 
about the disappointments of an endless slog in the desert, and about the unrealized expectation of equality and egalitarian role in the priesthood between the Israelites. He says, aren't we all holy, Aaron? Can't we all share in the priesthood? Predicting Jefferson by some 2,000 years, he makes an appeal to egalitarian principles before the idea of rights was a thought in anyone's mind. Moses and Aaron's response for their part is, for the most part, as ungenerous as his challenges. The end of the story is bloodshed, return to the status quo. It could have been a story about forgiveness and change, but instead it's about how power concedes nothing, to paraphrase Frederick Douglass. For modern readers, this story makes us question whether the heroes are always so much more virtuous than the villains as we discussed a little in Torah study. On the stage of human history then, it's perhaps less helpful to think in terms of heroes and villains, and perhaps more in terms of complex human beings whose moral imagination is often trapped by the constraints of their circumstance. That's not to let anyone in particular off the hook, but it's also to acknowledge that progress happens slowly, frequently, unevenly, and that it takes both radicals and incrementalists to make it happen. Are these recent Supreme Court decisions and those that may come going to lead us to a country that is ultimately safer, more free, more supportive of the natural rights that our founders encoded into law? I'm really not sure. Our separation of powers was designed to allow citizens to use their voice in response to actions they find unsupportive of America's founding ideals. Will those systems work? Again, I'm not sure, but I do know that it's up to us if they do work. It's up to us to pay attention, to participate in the civic life of our country. We need to vote, to write, to rally, to hold our elected officials to account once we've elected them. This Supreme Court seems to be signaling a troubling and imbalanced shift, in my opinion. But as we are reminded, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it leads toward justice. Future generations may judge someone like me as an incrementalist, and not just in terms of my carbon footprint. But I'm trying to do something, something that matters. This, I think, is all that anyone can ask. When the headlines rile us, anger us, it's not enough to simply fume and storm. We have to rise up and help. Life, like Judaism, is not a spectator sport, but it is a team sport. So the Mishnah says, The work is not yours alone to complete, yet neither are you free to desist from it. Justice cannot sleep forever. Thomas Jefferson said it. I believe it. I look forward to finding out what together we can accomplish. Shabbat Shalom. Our service concludes now, beginning on page 586 with Aleinu Lishabeach. Please rise. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol, l'atet gedula l'yotze er reshit, shelo asanu kegoye ha'aratzot, velo osamanu kemishpechot ha'adama, shelo osam chelkenu kahen, vegor aleinu kechol amonam. Vanachnu koreim, umishtachavim, umodim. Lifnei melech, malachei amalachim, akadosh baruchu. Page 591. Venei emar, raya adonai, lemelech al kolaretz. 
We can all have a seat, except for Jody, who I believe is going to greet us. Welcome back, Jody, to the Bima. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. A warm welcome to any guests here with us tonight, and especially to Dr. Basorla, our new cantorial soloist and educator. My name is Jody Ambrosino, and I am second vice president on the board of directors at TBT. That's the first time I'm saying that out loud. Scary, but good. Exciting. Tomorrow, join us on Zoom for a tour study at 9 a.m. led by Dr. Kosorla. Jumping right in for first time at TBT. Next Friday, join us at East Wharf Beach for the first of our two beach Shabbat this summer. And on Thursday, July 21st, and Tuesday, excuse me, Tuesday, August 9th, we will be hosting renovation tours, including wine and cheese and schmoozing with our own Rabbi Moss and Dr. Kasorla. You can RSVP to the office if you'd like to join. And don't forget to give generously to the Social Justice Committee's annual backpack drive. For more information on these and all our events and activities, check your inbox on our website and or, or our website, excuse me, and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Jody. I just want to say, not to dwell on it, because I know it makes all of us horribly upset, but when I was a child, those streets of Highland Park, Illinois, I hung out there. It's where my dentist was. My friend sold me my pair of Chacos that I still wear at the outdoor gear store downtown. I went to get bagels with one of my camp friends there. I was there all the time in the summers. Friends, it could have been me. It could have been any of us. This is the country we live in. This beautiful and ugly mess that we live in. It's so discordant to be here with all of you celebrating such a beautiful occasion, knowing that there is so much hurt and so much pain in our country. And so I want to share the names of the victims, those who have died in the wake of the murder, the massacre in Highland Park, Illinois. They include Catherine Goldstein, Arena and Kevin McCarthy, Jacqueline Sundheim, Stephen Strauss, Nicholas Toledo Zaragoza, and Eduardo Uvaldo. As I say Kaddish tonight, I'm going to be thinking of them and their families and the broken waves that will ripple out forever. In the period of Shiva and Shloshim, we're also thinking of the Calvert family tonight as Marjorie Calvert, mother of Rick Calvert passed away recently. If you're here observing a yard site, I invite you to please rise when I say the name of your loved one and stay standing if you're comfortable doing so. Those observing a yard site tonight are remembering somebody who passed away at this time in years gone by, including Sarah Shapiro, George Josephson, Beverly Tutel, Rhoda Fliss, Bert Gould, Jenny Levy, Robert E. Shore, Esther Simon, Eva Summer, Elsie Berman, Peter P. Casey, Polly Glossband School, Marie Kio Lesage, Annette Malamson, and Paul Tesler. There are others who you're thinking of because their memories are in your heart, even though they have left this world. Please feel free if you wish to share their names here or in the chat on Zoom.
it says in the Midrash that the people of Israel is like one soul, that when the limb of one hurts, the entire body feels it. And so we rise in solidarity as we feel the reverberations of grief and loss throughout our people, throughout our country, and connected to our brothers and sisters throughout the Jewish world. We turn to page 598. <speaking in Hebrew> Amen. <laughs> Damiran be alma vi imru, amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya, the chaim alenu vel kol Yisrael vi imru, amen. O se shalom vi imromav, huya se shalom, alenu vel kol Yisrael vi imru, amen. May the source of mercy and peace be merciful in giving comfort to all those who are bereaved on this day. As together we say, Amen. Oh, We can all have a seat. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. We look forward to affirming all that is joyous and wonderful about new beginnings, beautiful summer evenings. And we start by making Kiddush together. Would you like to lead us in Kiddush? Together? Sure. Yeah. Come give me a pinch number. One twenty-six. I used to know the Sidur by heart. Somebody have the page number? I never actually. It's not 126. 123. 123. I was only three pages off. Thanks, Rabbi. I think I owe Rabbi Offner $3 now. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher kishanu b'mitzvotav v'ratzav anu v'shabbat kosho ve'ahava v'ratzon inchilanu zikaron lemaasei v'reishit ki hu yatechila v'mikra hekodesh zecher etziat mitzrayim. Kivanu v'achata, v'etanu kidasha, mikomim, v'shavat koshecha, v'ahava v'vratzon, inchatanu. Baruch atah Adonai, mekadesh hashabbat lechayim. Amen. Yeah, yeah, you're really good at this. Logistical rabbi. You want to like help me with this logistics? Mm -hmm. Next, next time, time. yeah, next sure. Time. Sounds okay. like a good idea. You didn't see that end. Magic. There's bread.
got to feed the workers. You got to feed the workers first, actually. Mm -hmm. That's true. It's communal. Any choir members out there? Huzzah. Huzzah. I thought, I thought they were all the choir members. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they sing so nicely, don't they? That you would think any of them could be. Um, in the yeah, choir, seriously. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, come by microphone. Yeah, come by the microphone. You can actually. I'm going to move over, and you guys can sort of spread out or group. Yeah. Across two microphones. Across two. Oh. What key are we doing? What key are we doing? This in? Oh, okay. Oh, do you want do you want guitar or just have to tell? I don't know. <laughs> Acapella is probably that's what we're used to. <laughs> Why don't you start Acapella? Okay. And if we and we can keep it up. Okay. The words are Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah. Come let us sing. Sing hallelujah. That's it. You don't need to look down, just sing. But everybody needs to come close to the microphone. <laughs> Hava, Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah, Shir Hallelujah. Hava, Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah, Shir Hallelujah. Hava, Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah, Shir Hallelujah. Friends, I've been asked to remind you that the Oneg is open again for maximal schmoozing and delight. I look forward to greeting you. I know that Dr. Casorla does too. Thank you to our choir. Thank you to our committee for making this possible. Thank you to our sound helpers and Susie and everybody oh, who made this evening possible. It really does take many hands to make such a beautiful evening look easy. Thank you. And Shabbat Shalom. Okay.